Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. I want to continue from where we left off before. You're in a room that has far more in it than you think. It's filled with those who are what you would call esoteric. We've also told you there'll come a day when inventions start to allow you, permit you, to see unexpected things. And science will have to rewrite the definition of life. That you will start understanding that in multi-dimensions there are reactions. Reactions that can only be judged as intelligent. Not otherworldly, right here on the planet. And you will realize at some level that truly you're not alone. That there's more here than you ever thought. The inventions that I'm talking about will be physics which will allow you to see those things which are partly quantum. And that will then lead to other inventions and more discoveries. It's the way of it, dear ones, because this is the evolution of knowledge. The kinds of things that you will be presented with that you'd study and know right now are real and true. I want to discuss something which is very close to me. I've told you before, crying is not an entity. The word is given to an energy group that speaks to you on a regular basis and has the same message from the other side of the veil. Very difficult for any human to understand this and even the ones of you that say you do, it's still something that is not in your reality so you make assumptions about it I speak through my partner because that's the way spirit speaks to humans and it always has been all scriptures were this way all written by humans all presented by humans so that you would understand that it's a combination of partnership and it is the partnership is God inside so you might say I represent a piece of you and you might feel it and resound to it recognize it and that's why you accept it the way you do I want to talk about something I want to make a paraphrase of a verse of scripture from that which you call your Bible the part of the Bible which is new and not old by an apostle some of you may recognize it some of you may not it is totally completely paraphrased paraphrased and here it is I may be famous I may be a king I may be in charge of a country I might even be a pharaoh but unless I have love I'm simply a noisemaker in the wind and there will be no record of anything after I'm gone this scripture speaks of the power of love it speaks of it in a way that you might not expect way ahead of its time with the one who wrote it actually feeling in his cells the love of God in a way that could only be divine and nothing that he had generated as a human being you might say he was on fire for God he loved that which he felt and he was one with everything he knew who he was but he really really knew about love what is your perception of love I want to review some things I have said before for this discussion 
Love is not understood. And in your language, you have one word for it. It's not understood because it's so many things. Because it's used so often to represent so many conditions, parameters. In some languages, there's up to 13 words for love. Because love could be so many things. It could be the love that you have for your child, for your parents, for your partners. The love that you have for your friends, the love you have for your pets. The love you have for the earth, for Gaia, for the trees. I've just given you many kinds of love. And then there's the, the casual love. There is the, I love it when this happens. I love ice cream. I am in love with life. There are so many different kinds of the uses of the word love. So in this little discussion that we're having now, we'll try to define it. First of all, it's mostly undefinable. Did you know that love is a form of consciousness? It is not an emotion. I'll get to that. It's a form of consciousness. And no one knows what it is. You can measure the effects of love. And they're great. You can measure the effects of anger. And they are great in what they do to the chemistry. But love affects not just the chemistry. Love affects the individual piece of DNA. Love is individual, cell by cell. It doesn't trigger the reaction of a hormone or some kind of chemical that is going to create something in your body. It doesn't work that way, not really. It affects every cell, even to the DNA. It's really not understood, not definable. No biologist knows what it is. It cannot be defined because it is a mystery. Whereas anger and depression are not, love is. Because it's almost outside the body. A man or a woman who is in love goes temporarily insane. <laughs> Stops eating. Stop, starts looking at the wall and sighing a lot. Starts imagining. What is that? It's a state of consciousness that literally takes over your cellular structure for a while. Later in a more mature way, it sits within you in such an elegant way that it calms you. Even gives you longer life. It goes into the cells of your body in such a way anger does not, depression does not. It's not an emotion. It can be measured and has been over and over. And still, it's not really definable. Not the kind of love that we are talking about. A love that is far beyond the love of a mother for the child. And that's a lot. It's the love of the Creator. It's the love the Creator has for you. Unspeakable because it is not definable. Unspeakable because it is out of the realm of your understanding. And we'll talk about it in a moment. It's really not of this world. And you know that. It's not the love of an, a human for an animal or the human for a tree. It's a different kind of love. Completely, totally different. <clears throat> we'll define it as that which you can experience profoundly when you think of the creator partnership with you. That's as good as we can make it. And that's what we want to discuss. There's so much we'd like to tell you about love. 
Dear ones, it's from God. It's from the other side. It's from spirit. It's from the creator. Whatever name you have. For that which created you and all that is here. From that which lives inside you. It's from the other side of the veil. And it's changing. The energy on the planet is starting to create different kinds of patterns. The very magnetic field that you have, readjusted as it has been, allows for different patterns. It relates to consciousness. There is the key that my partner has taught all day long. That the magnetics of the planet, that field you sit in, that has life purpose within it, that you need for life. That magnetic field is related to what you think, consciousness. Therefore, since consciousness is related to the physics of magnetism, and magnetism is the magnetic field of the planet that you all sit in, therefore, you can affect the entire humanity of consciousness by what you start and what you feel. And the key is love. The love from the other side of the veil that comes with you, with the higher self inside you, through the pineal, into you. That's the love we speak of. It's from the other side of the veil. Now you knew that. It's why it seems so otherworldly. It's why it seems like it's not an emotion. And the proof of this is so obvious. With love, you get celebration, joy, and laughter. We've told you that humor is one of the only things that passes freely through the veil when you arrive. That the inner child that you have, where you remember who you were, laughing, enjoying yourself, giggling, so divine. It's such a divine feeling for this, more than emotion. It's a paradigm you have that is sacred. I want to show you something. Laughter and joy is addictive. And it's catchy. Almost like you would catch something in the air. And this has been proven over and over scientifically. If you get a number of people together, let's say, in a train and one of you starts laughing over a period of time it's contagious and if you continue it the entire train car will be laughing and they will have no idea why <laughs> it's not an emotion it is an energy and it's a sacred beautiful energy and the laughter is something that comes so freely when you get fear out of the way and all the other things that would get that into that way which would create darkness it's infectious the laughter that is there it's more than some of the other things that humans do which also seems that way one yawns many yawn <laughs> It's not that way. It's beautiful. Not an emotion. And you know it. Now, let me ask you. Is it this way for fear? Is it this way for depression? Can you hardly wait to be with the depressing person? No. When somebody is angry, you can feel it. It's an emotion almost has a field about it and what do you do you want to get away from it as soon as possible two people are arguing you leave you can feel dysfunction and you're uncomfortable but when there's a group laughing all you want to do is join it and find out why you want to laugh with them you want to be joyful with them dear ones this is from the other side of the veil this is light this is light you cannot categorize it as something that the human being does naturally that is emotion only. 
It's from the other side of the veil and it has energy you cannot define. How does that feel to you? And now I'll tell you why. Love is quantum. A word that is overused, it's a word I give you because you use it. It's not accurate. Let me give you the truth. Love is multidimensional. It exists in those dimensions, some of whom you don't want to acknowledge who are here. It happens in a non-linear area. And it's so hard to define. It's out of the definition, probabilities and possibilities of any understanding from a human being at this point in time. It's so far above who you are or what you can perceive. I can't even begin to give you an answer of what it is. Or where it came from or why. It's like this. I give examples of multidimensionality freely. So you'll understand what you don't know. Or what you can't compute. Or what you don't have an answer for. Because it's beyond that which you know. Here's a question, a logical question, how long is a string? And you will come back and say, well, I can't, I can't answer it. And we say, why not? It's a simple question. And you would say, because we have to know more about the string. No, you don't. I'm asking you how long it is. Well, in order to do that, we'd have to know more about the string and where it goes to and from whether it's city to city or whether it's room to room or table to table, then we can tell you how long a string is. And we say, not acceptable. I want the answer. How long is a string? And you say, I don't know. I can't tell you. What if we put the string and tied it together and now it's a circle? How long is the string? <laughs> and you'll say, now we're in trouble because the string is infinitely long. And you say, the string goes forever? And you say, yes, the string goes forever. But it's the same string and it's pretty small. How can it go forever if it's in a circle and it's very small, right here on this table? Would you explain infinite size of the string when it's simply something on the table in a circle? And you'll say, go away, kid. Don't ask me any more of those funny questions. That's love. You don't understand it. And it's changing in this physics. Love is starting to change. Because the attributes of love are compassion and joy and celebration. And that creates light. Light is starting to increase on this planet. And part of the increase is through the understanding of love. The more compassionate you can be to another human being, the more love is then spread and produced on this planet. Wait a minute, Crying, you just said something that I don't understand. You said that love would be produced and spread on the planet. Now, isn't that just between the two of us? Who, I feel compassion for this person. A person perhaps I've been angry with in the past, but now I see God inside them and I have compassion for them, not sorrow. I have compassion that they are with me in a, a planet where we both have God inside. This is my compassion for them. But it's just for us. And I'm telling you, oh, no, it isn't because you don't know what I know. If you knew what love really was, you'd understand that in the compassion you have for another, you have just generated more of it. But where does it go? And the answer is yes. How long is a string, my friend? The love that is generated turns into light. And that light is everywhere at the same time. It's on the opposite side of the world as it is with you. You are with a person and suddenly 
a person you didn't care about or you had judgment about and suddenly something snaps and you say I see the oneness of them we're together in this planet both loved by God isn't this beautiful and you have a compassionate moment and I'll tell you the light has just been increased on the planet that's multidimensionality a reality you don't understand with rules you don't know about that can be everywhere at the same time just like God and you're creating it. Love therefore becomes a tool of the creation of light. The love that you have comes from the other side of the veil. Of course it would be a tool. But in the new energy where there's more light showing up than darkness, you start to have that which is a, a bed of creation that you never have before. Harmony with the field that you've never had before. Benevolence you've never had before. Confluences of energies that you've never had before. And of course, coherence that you've never had before. This is the news. And there's more. There's much more. So let me, let me close with this. I want to tell you something that may be startling to you startling no matter who you are right now who's listening there'll come a day when you make your transition all of you on your way back to continue in the cycle and circle of life that you are carrying wisdom that you've learned for the first time that you can share in a new life will it evolve to kosh where you remember who you are to the degree that you remember that which is beautiful and precious a memory that's going to create balance instead of imbalance and you won't have the dysfunctions you have today disease that will not attach to you because you're in a new energy that it cannot surviving but when you transition there will be this linearity of those around you and they will say there goes a loving compassionate person and it's so sad as though the love and the compassion suddenly got ground into the floor and was no longer there you assume that the person and the life and everything they were and the compassion they had and the love that they had for everybody else simply stops when they're gone. And you don't know. You don't know <laughs> that everything they did remains on the planet. Let me ask you. The guru that perhaps you celebrated and you followed their life. The master, the monk, the nun. The ones dedicated to love. And when they died, what happened? For some unknown strange reason, their love continued. Did you notice? And you can visit where they were or where they held meetings and all you feel is love. What is that? I'll tell you, it's an imprint on this grid, on this planet that stays like the one that you're creating right now with the compassion and the love that you have for others the more that is generated and the purer it is and the more mature and elegant that it becomes its purity stays here stays here someday you're going to have elegant beautiful funerals right now they're not you do your best you gather together and you celebrate who they were and you cry and you're sad for the part that says their body is gone someday you'll go beyond that and you'll celebrate what they created that's still here and the love and what they did on this planet that affected everything and you'll sing cheerful songs songs that you sang in celebration when you were children and could twirl around because you know they're coming back as children 
because they're going to experience that which they created and what they left. They're going to be born into a world that has more love than the one they came into originally. And that funeral will have a name that you will put to it. I don't know what it's going to be yet. A different kind of a goodbye. It's not a goodbye at all. It's a transition. It's an acknowledgement. It's a maturity that you haven't had yet. More than a celebration of life, it's a cheerful event that says thank you. Thank you. And when you come back, we may not know who you are, but we're going to thank you in advance for even coming back. That's where it's going. Someday these things that are sad today will not be. And you will also recognize that those you've loved and lost are still here. And that they had an influence on the planet the best they could. They're still, they're still everywhere. Some of them have actually come back. So that they could feel the energy as children. And remember who they were. And continue the process of the love of God. And so it is.